Following the unexpected release of Omoyele Shori, convener of Revolution Now protest, the federal government gave the reason for his incarceration. And in the spirit of Christmas, the opposition party PDP has urged Nigerians not to lose hope despite the tough economic times. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Apparently, Omoyele Shore, convener of Revolution Now protest, was detained allegedly for planning to overthrow President Muhammad Buhari. Now, this was revealed by the president's media aide, Garba Shehu, who also stated that Buhari's administration had never detained a journalist since coming to power in 2015. And while all of this is going on, the PDP uh, has stated that the release of the former detainees, talking about Shuri and uh, former NSC boss, would not change government's attitude towards the rule of law. Well, joining us to have this conversation, we're being, uh, we have in the studio Jide Benson. He is a political commentator. It's good to have you join us. It's good to be here. Good evening. So, Jide, I mean, Merry Christmas. Let's go straight into the conversation. Let's start by the presidency's. Um, reasons for detaining Omoyele Shuri. Let's backtrack a little bit. I, I remember I, re, I interviewed Omoyele Shuri three days before his uh, arrest and I remember asking him expressly what kind of revolution he was talking about, how he hoped that we would change Nigeria and he said it was going to be an organic revolution. I'm trying to understand, maybe you could help me, could it be what he said, how he went about it, that could have met, made the government think that she was going to overthrow them. And, and how does one man overthrow a government? <laughs> well, um, how does one man on overthrow a government? Never, never underestimate the power of one person. Oh, well. um, we talk about Martin Luther King today, the I Have a Dream speech. And that's what led to the emergence of a man called Barack Obama as president but he didn't overthrow States. government. No, 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 I'm saying that, I'm, I'm just talking about the power of one person. Mm -hmm. Now, the revolution that you talk about is long needed. Now, whether it's a violent revolution is a different thing, but there's a need for a change in the mindset of the people of Nigeria. We have an unusually low standard of, of um, a lot of things. Uh, we settle for too many, very little things. Um, if I were the government, I would have let um, Momo Elishwari have his way. Um, I'm not um, a prophet, but I think that if that event had allowed to go the way of Shore, at least on the first day, not many Nigerians would have um, come out to support it, and they think would have died a natural death. So what the government has done by arresting him, keeping him in perpetuity, disobeying court orders, is to make a hero out of him. Yeah. Now, the clamor by Omar Yelishore was in some form for good governance. I mean, we have a president who's referred to himself has many things. A reformed Democrat, um, Mr. Integrity, and the call for the revolution came, became louder when the president had sent the list of his ministerial nominees to the National Assembly. And we had on that list people of questionable character. And I'm sure that if the president were to do a soul searching, he should not be okay with some of the people who made that list. And I think it's on the basis of that, that if that revolution had been, if, sorry, I, I'm very careful about the use of the word revolution. If the protest or the demonstration had been allowed to take place, some of the grievances of the people in the forefront or the vanguard of that protest mm -hmm. would have been able to mention names and name a few other things which the government would have benefited a lot from. And that would have positioned the government as one that is alive to the yearnings and aspirations of the people. But you and I in this country, I mean, with all of the things that have been happening and the antecedents of this government, yes. do they seem or come across? Yes. And let me use the parlance that we use yes. in Nigeria very often. Does their body language suggest that they would take any opposition, any leaf from whatever protest or whatever comments that people have to say or criticisms that are put out there? Clearly not. And that's, that's a faux pas on the part of governments and back to back. Um, they continue to lose 
um, golden opportunities that they are supposed to use to score to their advantage. In public relations, there's something called spinning. Mm -hmm. Something that's going against you, you flip the script and it gets to your advantage. Just for instance, I mean, that day, maybe the, the group led by Omoya Elishuari, Omoya Elishuari was picked in Lagos about, what, two days before that thing was supposed to have started. And let's say he started in Lagos and the president had maybe um, requested the governor of Lagos State to allow that protest to hold freely mm -hmm. and provide security to demonstrators. Now, those in Abuja, if he had designated the minister of the federal capital territory and the IG of police to ensure that the people's right to protest is not, um, is not violated. And perhaps they marched to the presidential villa and he came out to address them, saying that, I hear your cry, I listen to you. Now, if anything had happened on the second day, Nigerians would have rallied around the president. You asked for a protest, you asked for a demonstration, he allowed it, well, of course, in accordance with the law, and he came out to listen to you. I mean, that would have been a good opportunity for the president to score, to, to score a good point, but they missed it. I'm just, because when we have these conversations, I yes. like to make reference to any antecedents whatsoever. Please do. Have there been any, have there been any presidents yes. in the history of our democracy yes. who have come out to address any protest whatsoever to say, well, I have heard you and I will do it. There so why, why should we be expecting this president? There hasn't to do been, so? and I think that's the very reason why we continue to have a repeat of the kind of persons we have in government. If this government had decided to what, go a different path, it would have positioned this government as one that is alive to the yearnings of the people. That previous governments haven't done it is not an, indic is not an excuse for this government not to do it. Interesting. Our correspondent, Amadin Uyi, was at the um, courthouse or the DSS office yesterday while Omoyele Shori was being released, although we couldn't catch a glimpse of the NSA boss, but uh, Amadin Uyi reports. Journalists had thronged the headquarters of the Department of State Services, DSS, in Abuja, unsure whether Omoyele Shori and Sambu Dasuki would be released. Many hoped the federal government would keep to his word this time and released the duel after they were rearrested several times, despite several court orders demanding their release. After waiting for almost four hours, information came in that Mr. Shore had secured his freedom. The press camper to get a glimpse of him. The wait has been extremely long, but finally Omoyele Sowere has been released from the custody of the Department of State Services, DSS. This followed a press release earlier issued uh, from the office of the Attorney General of the Federation of Burwaka Malami. We thank Nigeria. They made this happen. And it should not really happen. Yeah, Nobody can take a people who are deserving. Nobody can. So what happened? Although Sambo Dasuki was not cited, Plus TV Africa will be following up to confirm if he was also released from custody. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. So that's Shawere, home and free. And uh, to quote um, Malami, he had said that he directed the, the state security service to comply with the court order granting bail to both uh, the former NSA boss, Samboda Suki, and um, Moeli Shuri, and he said his decision was in compliance with the bail granted. A lot of people that are saying that so much water has gone under the bridge, Indeed. you know, there have been calls by the U.S. I remember we put up a video by a U.S. senator talking about why um, Shuri was still being held and what happened to him side by side with his wife. And several governments have reacted also after his release. Although there have been people saying that um, there was no such thing as a letter from above, and above meaning outside, that could have allowed for... Recently, the uh, Nigerian government reacted to the U.S.'s um, report about us being um, ill-treating or maltreating um, people who are Christians. The Pope has also spoken about mm -hmm. it, and the response was really not nice, because we did say that the U.S. should focus on their matters and leave us alone and that we don't take orders from them. What do you think led to the government's change of heart? It couldn't have been our protests because they were very minimal, if there were any, you know. And the last one, which was uh, the one that saw one of the Revolution Now men being hit and bullied, could that 
have twisted the arm of government? What do you think as an outsider looking in? Okay, so you raise a lot of issues. Um, first of all, um, the directive, the directive, and I say that from in the quote, AGF. from the yes, the chief, the attorney general and minister of justice, the chief law officer of the court. Um, it's shameful. It is worrisome that the attorney general would be the one to give an order, a subsequent order, when a court has given an order. If anything, he should have prevailed on the DSS mm -hmm. to obey the court's ab initio. But he was silent. At some point, we heard that um, he had taken over the prosecution of the case. I don't think that this decision to release Shuori and Dasuki is ordinary. Um, don't forget about three or four days ago, the Attorney General had um, issued a statement that he received no letter from the U.S. government. Um, whether we like it or not, um, the U.S. is still a very strong um, player in the politics of the entire world. Um, there's, there's the power of the U.S. visa, for instance. There's the power of um, um, public public relations and political diplomacy, international diplomacy. There's a the power of pressure and lobbying. There's, there are lots of things that could have been at stake that um, got the government to take the, this decision at this time. Possibly, just possibly, maybe that so-called letter had given an ultimatum, maybe I seven mean, we, days we or 11 days. We saw that letter. It, it became public. I think yeah, we, all, yeah. we have it. We, okay. We're going to put up a picture of it. Okay. But the, the Attorney General still is saying yeah, that I mean, that yeah. wasn't yeah, anything. Yeah, he, he, he has to put up a bold face. Because we don't take orders Yeah, he has to US. put up a bold face. He has to act like a sovereign that we are. Don't forget. I mean, and that's something we should never take away from our government or our country. We're a sovereign and we, don't, we shouldn't bow unnecessarily to mm -hmm. um, directly from other governments. Nigeria is a sovereign state. However, we have, not, um, we have not done things in the right way that they should be doing. And that's why you could... You could have witnessed, we could have witnessed some of the interference that we've witnessed in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we allowed it to come upon us. Um, Shore wasn't much of a threat. Um, the government simply made a hero out of him. Uh, why take a man to court when you know that you're not going to obey the directives of the court? You're the one who took him to court. And the court has said, grant him bill. He's not a security risk. He's not a national risk. He's a little... But that's what the security agencies are no, claiming. No, no, no. That's what the DSS is saying, that no. look... At best, this is why we held the man. Yeah. He was planning to dethrone the president. No, you see, and this is a felony of sorts. Yeah, they, they had to come up with such statements, phrases, or expressions just to make it look. And that is why I asked big. the question I asked earlier: Which Can is, a, a shawari, not just any man, no, can a shawari no. on sit a president, no. Muhammad Buhari? No. No. But you also no. started by saying that you cannot underestimate the power of one person. Yes. So. If they had allowed that thing to go on, on what, August 5, again, I reiterate, even though I am not a prophet, it would have ended on that day. Um, Nigerians are too disgruntled to get up at this time for a protest. Now, if Omoshel... I thought disgruntled people would actually be the ones to protest. Yes, so, so which, is, which is the point. Nigerians are too tired. Like, look, I think people are already counting down. Oh, they're tired, people. but they're not tired of what we're suffering from. No, no we're tired and would rather just forbear till 2023. I mean, this is what I think, that we'd rather just forbear till 2023 and then we'll say never again to the mistake of 2015. Will we? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we want to speak with um, uh, a human rights lawyer who was part of uh, Shuri's legal team. We will be talking to him in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, we will be having him live on the phone. We okay. will get his perspective as to why... Um, Shore was detained or what he thinks okay. could have been the reason. Uh, I think we are having him live on the phone line right now. Okay. Hello, Barrister, it's good to have you join us. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, can you tell us briefly why you think the federal government um, decided to finally let Shoere go, and not just him, but the NSA boss. For, for some Nigerians, this was an interesting Christmas gift. Uh, what? I, I didn't get your question clearly. So I was asking, from your perspective as an insider, why do you suspect the federal government decided to release Omoyele Shoere and the former NSA boss? We think it was an early Christmas gift. What do you think? The... the the word give is somehow objectionable. Because if we say it is a Christmas gift, 
is to appear as if the federal government is doing us some favor. What the federal government has done is not an act of favor. It is basically compliant with the order of the court. I want to believe that the pressure that we have been mounting consistently and also the intervention of the international community would have had effect on the government. That suggests why they have uh, decided to comply with the order of the court. And you, you think that the, the timing of the compliance, because when you say they finally decided to comply, there have been so many violations of court orders. So uh, even though the Attorney General has said that, you know, foreign powers had nothing to do with this, he denied receiving any letter from the U.S., uh, but, but that they decided to let him go. And they have not necessarily given us a real reason as to deciding to let him go. You don't expect the government to admit that they are acting because they were pressurized. Apparently, they, they are not going to admit to that. But what I can tell you clearly is that the government itself has been very confused on how to handle the situation. That explains the litany of embarrassing and contradictory press statement issued by the SSS and spokesperson of the presidency. So for us, it is basically cautious optimism. And we are hoping that they are not going to renege on the decision they have taken. We are hoping that they are not going to be rearrested, both Colonel Sambo Daku. I know more you Mr. Nibaga, uh, th there, there were conditions for this bail. I, I'm not a lawyer, so I might not know, but there were conditions clearly stated for this bail. And if they are being violated, of course, there will be a reason or a cost for re-arrest. And you're hoping that that might never have to come up, right? No, the, the question of bail is exclusively for the court. The government cannot be the prosecutor and the judge. Only a court of law can determine whether a person admitted to bail by the court has breached the terms of his bail or not. Hasn't the reverse been the case so far, especially in the case of Amoyele Shoure and um, no, Shoure the has IMN not leader? Bail. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I, I'm confirming to you that Shawere has not, has not breached any of the conditions of his birth. What, the drama that transpired inside the courts that led to a re-arrest by the DSS, it was that he's, he had somehow violated his bail, which was he had consulted with people when he was not supposed to, right after he was released. That is false. No such thing transpired. It was a dummy sold to Nigerians by the government. They have since realized that lies cannot prevail forever. No such thing transpired. And let me also mention to you that when they were in court on the 6th, they never drew the attention of the court to the purported uh, interaction with people. That is because what they said was not true. Interesting. Finally, before I let you go, uh, Mr. Nibege, what do you think that this whole drama that has transpired since August up until yesterday is going to do to the image of this government and, of course, Nigeria at large, to the international community? Apparently, the image of the regime has been dented. The image of the regime has been seriously bastardized as a result of this grievous violation of human rights. The international community is watching closely. And I know the Nigerian government knows this. And they also understand the implication of that. Thank you very much, uh, Inibe Gefiong, for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So, I mean, he's telling us that 
most of the things that the government was selling to us, the people, he's making us to believe that these things were not really true. And my question always is, why does the government have to go through all of that trouble to sell us something that's not true? Is there more to this than really that it meets the eye or it's just one of those things that governments do? Bad advisors and people who cannot speak through to truth to power. Those are the people that I think that always surround presidents and leaders in this climb. Um, if, if I stated that Shoei had violated one or two of the bill conditions, it was not the responsibility of the men in black to have gone to embarrass themselves. And I say that very carefully. Although up until today, they still say they don't know the man who was in the court. It was, it was a planned it was not, thing. It was not in their place to have gone to carry out that show of shame in the court. What they needed to have done was to approach the court, the judge who, who granted him bail to say, this is what, these are the conditions upon which he got a bail and he has violated one or two of them and we're asking for an order to rearrest him. I mean, I've not seen one person, one person who's commended what happened in court that day. What has happened is condemnation locally and internationally. And shamelessly, you find one of the spokespersons of the president who issued a statement trying to justify the shame and the charade that happened in court on that day, saying that Shore is a person of interest to any serious government. Again, that was some low sinking. Interesting. Another problem that we, this government seems to face or have faced well, from 2015 up until now is communication. Yes. Um, Nigerians have complained about the president never speaking to us within the country. Yes. He has to go out of the country before yes. he can speak to us. And also messaging uh, across his handlers and aides. Why do you think that this is a problem for this administration? And what would think that, you know, for an administration that has zero tolerance for corruption and is trying to bring us change, this should, the messaging should be as clear as possible? There's no strategy and it's an approach of let the public be That's damned. what you think, right? There's no, there's no communication strategy. So I'll give you a good example. I mean, two weeks ago or thereabout, The Punch had, a, had an interesting editorial um, deciding to refer to to borrow from um, Ini, the, the lawyer, mm -hmm. to refer to this government as a regime mm -hmm. and to refer to the president as with his military rank he last held. He had three statements from each of the uh, media aides of the president, the SA media and publicity, the SSA media, and the one that tweets. One statement would have been fine. And I think that one, and I think the statement that was issued by Mr. Femi Adishino would just have been fine. It shows clear lack of coherence. I mean, there are about five media aides. There's Loretta Onoshe, there's um, Bashir Ahmed, there's Femi Adeshino, there's Gar Bashir, there's a minister of information, there's Ajurin Gilale. So if I stop counting, that's about six people. There's a Tolu Gunlesi, that's seven. There are about seven people who have the responsibility to communicate on behalf of the president to different audiences or the same audiences. And we couldn't find one good statement to hold on to from any of them. They were speaking discordant tunes. Garba Shew's statement was clearly different from that of Femi Adishino. It shows you that something is wrong. It shows you that these people cannot speak truth to power. It shows you that they're not connected. There's no connected thinking going on. Everybody's trying to appease their master. Unfortunately, and do you think that the presidency doesn't... I mean, let me rephrase my question. Yes. If the presidency saw something wrong with this, yes. there could have been a change, but maybe could it be that he's okay with the messaging? He probably doesn't even know. I mean, we heard a minister in the government say that the president doesn't even read. Oh, I mean, these are allegations. Yeah, I mean, that's why I say we've heard the minister say, I mean, it's not, my, it's not my saying that he probably is not even aware. I mean, his wife has said a lot of things to us that we can go to town with. So he's probably too busy with state affairs than to be bothered by words of, from the opposition. Okay, well, it's been an interesting conversation. Uh, Jide Benson, political commentator, he's not going anywhere. We'll take a break, stay with us. When we come back, the opposition, the PDP, has a Christmas message for us. And you'll get to hear it after the break. <laughs>